Just a short intro to myself, who doesn't know me, the whole slide is for you, and uh, who have seen my last demo, for instance, five months ago, only the last line is for you, um, which only changed since then. And today, I'm going to talk about the Microsoft uh, Teams messaging extension, and especially about the authentication part uh, to access, for instance, the Microsoft Graph, but this you could also re um, replace to other third-party APIs where you have uh, authentication in. And let me first uh, show you what uh, the scenario is about. So the scenario is about a small document library. It could also be a bigger one, but uh, just for example, we have several documents and some of the documents are, uh, yeah, need some review. And this uh, we want to uh, communicate about in Microsoft Teams. What we need for that is, of course, uh, or is uh, the library and the Microsoft Teams app. We come to that in a minute. But what we also need as a messaging channel is a bot channel. So we need some settings here. And, and this bot, and this is very important, has a custom uh, Microsoft Graph connection. And this graph connection um, is simply an app registration um, which needs to be configured and needs to be placed here inside this bot message settings. And how does this work? And for, uh, when we have installed our app, we can, uh, for instance, reach this messaging extension here from the Composer bar. We click on it, and then we get the documents shown here that needs a review. The display, and this is what I have to add, is a uh, search command based. So you have no much in this scenario. You have not much uh, uh, customization options here. You can only list some uh, documents or some other items, and then you can pick them and put them in. Of course, you can also move, and what you can on top do is uh, once you have them, you can also filter them. So for instance, filter out all the document stuff and only get the special one. This would work as well. And on top, we can also configure that stuff. So in our case, um, we have a direct library connection, no search something. Um, so uh, in this example, what I'm doing here is just putting my site ID and my list ID where I can retrieve my data from and uh, configure and, and that stuff. So this is how it works uh, from a user perspective. And now let us check how it works from code perspective. Therefore, we can attach our debugger, switch back, and then we are in our debugger and in a uh, so called middleware processor here. And um, what we did here is uh, we were trying an authentication against our connection name from the connected bot channel. And in this case, we have the positive case here. We already received a token. And if we receive this token, we will continue later. Otherwise, we would come into a sign-in authentication. This I will show later because therefore I will have to sign out because you already have seen um, that I was successfully running that demo uh, a minute ago. So let's first continue with the positive part. So we already have signed in. And then we are coming first here to our so-called initial run. This initial run means we have no further filtering. So we will show all the parts. We have no uh, search, um, search value to uh, incorporate. And then we will go on and uh, go to our graph controller and retrieve the documents from there. This is what I will um, shorten up here. Once we have our documents, we can see that we have four of them. We will iterate them and transform them into adaptive cards. This adaptive card is the final result we see in the messaging extension and also with our action buttons here. And then what we also have on top is this small preview parts. And this is the small, not really customizable result in our search result window. And um, so here we only have a title 
a text, our description, and an image. Yeah, there's not much to customize. So here's our preview. We can now uh, continue. And what we will see when we go back to our uh, result, of course, is the, um, that this took too long. And uh, in this case, this is because our debugging and our, my explanation took too long uh, for Teams. Teams could wait for that. And to jump further, I would just have to turn off debugging once again, that we can go on and come to the next point. So once again, we have our documents. And what we do now here is we will insert a document. We can also send this, but this doesn't really matter for the next step. Um, what I want to show you in the next step, and then we'll have to turn my debugger on again, is the action. Of course, we have a small view action. This is only HTML link. This is not really, uh, this is quite boring, but we also have a review action. And this review action has directly back connection to a SharePoint via graph. And we will only uh, extend this a bit. We could enter some uh, date here. And we can finally kick off the action and put this to review. Then we are back in our middleware on the card button clicked here. And what we will do here is now we get our uh, graph controller again. We will get our site IDs, um, our list IDs from the configuration here. The code is not quite correct, but anyway, I will get some values. And then I will finally kick off the update item. I will kick off my graph connection and go through that. And what I finally did, um, also I can show you in the last point, this is not really necessary. This is just for demonstration purposes. Here at the end, I'm signing out now. So in my next step, I can show you uh, how it looks like when the user is not signed in. Yeah, this is not officially, this has nothing to do with uh, an update. Uh, of a document, but just for demonstration purposes. Okay, switching back to our team, or better, let's check our library here and our special document, what happened to it. There we are, we have an update. So we remember the date, 1st of February. There we are. So finally, this doesn't really matter. The, the, re, the action took place. Um, now we get back in and remember we signed out. And this time we are in our debugger mode here and there our token is undefined. So we have no token and we press F5 and we will return an action here. Hope this works and there it is. Here's our sign in action. We can set this up. This works seamlessly and now we are back and here we have our token again. This is signed in. This is not a process for minutes. This is a process for a long time. So uh, if I make a demo tomorrow again uh, and I would not uh, execute my sign out, I would be still sign in because this is an authentication again to the boss channel. Quickly run through it. Hope I'm fast enough. You've seen that already. No, I was not fast enough. Anyway, we can turn off again the debugger and show you once again. There's your data. We are missing one document, of course, because this is already reviewed and that's it. So this was from my side for today. Um, I think David already shared uh, my blog series on that topic. If you want to get uh, deeper information, also the code repository. And to get back to my slides again, to sum up what we have seen, we have a search based messaging extension. We have seen we have seen something about authentication, especially here in the back end. We have seen searching and filtering, and we have seen the configuration part. What I'm currently working on is to transform this to an action based scenario. And the main difference from an action based scenario would be here. You could control what I uh, showed you in the search results where you cannot control much of the AI. You can control uh, let me call it the first initiation. You must not, you can of course uh, display uh, yeah, a complex uh, grid or something like that, even of results, but you can also jump uh, totally uh, come in with an input form or something like that. 
And um, this is what I'm working there. There you can also work with authentication in the front end. So you can use the preview SSO feature in combination with the on behalf flow. I'll show you some uh, resources for that in the next slide. And this authentication and the whole so-called task module in the front end could also be replaced by SharePoint framework since the latest version 1.11. And there it would be even easier combined with the authentication. Okay, as promised, also for the videos, uh, some resources, uh, my blog series and uh, the rep repository currently still in my own. What once I find some time promised, uh, Patrick, Victor, I will share it also with the team sample if appreciated. And then some uh, res uh, what I mentioned just about the front end authentication for action based scenarios. You could use uh, the SSO authentication, for instance, described in the wiki of the Yo Teams generator and also a great blog post from Victor on the second step, the get access token on behalf. That's from my side. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much.